Hey, how's it going? Miles here at Tactical Hive, and I'm joined by the 3Ds, Dave, Dor, and Dutch. Couldn't do it. Today we're going to be talking about how to grip your pistol. I know, I know that, that topic's been covered a lot, but we're going to change things a little bit. And uh, before I get into how we're changing things, I just want to emphasize here that if you follow Tackle Hive, we talk about principles and techniques. Principles are kind of the underlying foundation to every single technique out there. Techniques are different. Every one of these three guys here, gentlemen, are going to have different ways of teaching, different ways of gripping, but ultimately they will fulfill the principles of a good grip. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to imagine that one of their loved ones does not know, ha have a clue as to how to shoot a pistol and maybe they're maybe their home is getting broken into, they have to hand their loved one a gun. They got one minute to teach their loved one to hold that gun. Now let's, let me, for all three of you guys here, um, some of, the, some of the, 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 the context here, we're not talking about aiming, we're not talking about like trigger control, don't worry about that. We're just gonna keep it simple in a vacuum here where it's just like, just teach them grip. And we're assuming everything else, they'll, they'll figure it out, okay? So you got one minute to teach them grip. So we're gonna start from left to right, give them exactly a minute, and I'd like you guys to spend as much time as possible. Yes, we're using the context of like, maybe someone's breaking into your house, but imagine, you know, you got that full minute. Okay, you use, that, use up that full minute to go over anything. That they're in the want. neighbor's house. We got about a minute. Before yeah, you got, you, got, you got about They're on their way. Yeah, they're on their way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave, um, do you have a pistol yeah. that you can use? Yeah. Okay, great. And Dave, before I start the time, pretend you're teaching me I'm your loved one and I don't know how to shoot a gun and you got one minute to teach me. Okay. You, got, you ready? Yep. All right, go. My first concern with it is uh, you anticipating the round and driving the driving the bullets down, right? So to alleviate some of that, I'm going to take I'm going to put you in tendon lockout. So that support hand, as you present the possess the pistol, that support hand, I want that thumb at tendon lockout all the way forward like this as I marry his hands up and removing some of the capacity for that gun to dive. Nick, can it still dive? Certainly, but you're taking some of that out by, by already being here at a, mechanical, at a mechanical lock, number one. And then number two for grip, uh, space. You know, undo space makes waste. I, I want all this space gone. So anywhere where you see gaps in, I want you to fill it in with your hand best you can. So that tendon lockout, Marrying those guns up together and getting rid of any space in here when that gun recoils has room to move. Mm -hmm. um, helps keep your gun flat, helps you keep you on target uh, a little quicker. So it's pushed straight like that. All right, now it's uh, 57 seconds. All right. All right, so wait me a second, one second. Again, like you're teaching me, you got yep. one minute, door, go. All right, guys, you have two hands, you have four touch points. Touch point number one, web of the thumb up underneath the back strap. Touch point number two, middle finger, in this nice little crevice they've made for you, all right? Touch point number three is gonna be your support hand. You're going to put the web of the heel of the th uh, palm, just like this, together behind the pistol. Everybody's hand sizes are different. We're just gonna figure out what works for you. Touch point number four is your pointer finger underneath the trigger guard, just like so. Another thing that's very common that happens is limp wristing. You don't want to limp wrist uh, semi-automatic pistol, so you want to lock out this wrist and focus on keeping it straight and in line, uh, wrist in line with your arm just like so. But as far as grip goes, we do not limp wrist and we maintain those touch points. But as long as they- Time! Can... Good. All right. Nope. Nope. Dutch, Dutch has his own. Uh, Dutch has his own. Me and Mrs. Jones have a yeah. thing. All right, so guys, what I'm doing also is I'm, um, I'm keeping track of some of the commonalities and this is, uh, we have a lot of comments. People are interested how um, the different guys on the channel teach different things and kind of this is going to be a, a good uh, taste of that. And, and before Dutch goes, we want to thank Better Holsters for bringing you today's video. If you are looking for a good concealed carry holster, make sure to check them out. They were the first company I approached when I got my concealed carry holsters, and they have a huge selection. They're made in the USA. Make sure to check them out in the description below. All right, Dutch, you got one minuto. Are you ready? I'm ready. Go. Hey, babe, I know you already know how to shoot. So I just want to give you a couple tips on this Sig Sauer because she's a big Staccato fan. So I want you to just lay the pistol relaxed in your firing hand with your thumb up. What does this thumb do? It shows a gap, the gap I'm gonna fill with my non-firing hand. I also wanna to go to tended lockout. I wanna push out here. I wanna go out as far as possible in the presentation mode. And just like Dor said, I want as much of that surface area as possible covered under the gun because this is the most unforgiving platform you're ever gonna use. All right, so 
get this together thumbs relying on top of each other none of this banana peel mu uh, mush stuff hard on the support hand of 90 percent of my power is going to come from my support hand because i want to be relaxed with my trigger finger so i can pull the trigger while i'm moving the gun full presentation all the way out and that is it yep awesome so as you guys can tell all three of them really honed in on one very big principle and that is friction all three of them were like you got to really have as much contact with that gun they're trying to get rid of the space on the gun as well and that has a lot to do with friction and uh, in regards to not having that proper friction why like whoever wants to go why is it so important to have that i find after i get that first round off the first round is going to be okay but that second round third round fourth round that gun if i don't have all those spaces filled up with meat the, the gun starts to walk on me. Yeah, you know, it gets loose in my hands and my accuracy goes out the window. Yeah, the consistency is out, out the window. Got it. Anything, any other reason why, like what, what could go wrong if they don't have that friction? Well, if you first, I'll go. Uh, yeah, the, the, the gun can shift in their hands. They can, um, and then if it's shifting, they might counter, you know, like readjust while yeah. they're shooting. You don't want anything like that happening. Uh, if you're talking, if you're dealing with somebody with little to no experience whatsoever, I think trying to keep it as simplified as possible is probably in the best interest of everybody. Now, like what both you guys said, simple is key, right? It's eliminating all the variables because again, this is the most unforgiving platform you're gonna shoot. So yep. I want as much surface area covered on the gun because in the end, right? If you can pull the trigger without moving the gun, right? That's gonna get you your first shot. But just like Dave said, it's the grip that gets you the successive shots, which you're going to need. So you're going to have to make sure that that gun doesn't go anywhere and you can properly re-engage that target over again using uh, recoil management and trigger squeeze. Awesome, thanks guys. So friction is one of those, one of the fundamental principles to a good grip. And notice all three of them taught it differently. Uh, the way to deliver it was different, but underlying principle, it's all the same. It's interesting how Dave and Dutch talked about the support hand and tendon lockout. Now, here's the interesting thing. There's lots of different ways to teach that too. And if you shoot, if you follow a lot of professional shooters out there, there's really lots of different ways you can do that. You don't necessarily need to do tendon lockout, but if I had one minute and if some, I, I really had to teach somebody one minute, I mean, they, we really were going to have some threats after us. I'd probably say the same thing. It's about it's just, to get real. <laughs> yeah. Like literally just, even though this is not necessarily the way I would, it's just trying to reinforce because like out of all the techniques I've used, that's the one I feel is more natural for people. It's not to say it'll be more natural for you. If we had more time, then we can explore. But I got one minute, right? And then right. threats are coming. You know, so I, I'd probably do that. Um, I liked how uh, Dora talked about touch points. That is something mm -hmm. where, so it's interesting too. So Dora talked about touch points, with his, which is absolutely a great way to break it down to a student. I was trying to think though, like if this was like the real deal, I'd probably just go, Grip the damn gun hard with both hands. Grip right? it and yeah. rip it. Grip the damn gun hard. But I, w I would probably use the same thing that, that, that Dorb mentioned, though. Grip it hard, all right? Grip it hard, both hands really crush down with that support hand, and then lock the wrist, okay? So locking the wrist, that's something also that I think is very important. Exactly what Dorb said, uh, you don't want that gun flying up and down and all over the place when you take multiple shots. If you combine that with bad friction that everyone, all three talked about, and you have this wrist flopping all over the place, man, those follow-up shots are all over. Another thing I noticed that was, again, one of these instances where different people teaching, but they're following the principle, was Dutch and door, and I think to a certain extent also, Dave mentioned it, where you need to get good leverage on the gun. If you have that web of your hand really low on the pistol, that gun is gonna flop right? And um, Dutch put it in the way where you're going to lay that gun, get it nice and high on the, the beaver tail of the tank. And then uh, Dora mentioned um, you're going to have a touch point there. Dave, I believe um, he was saying just get rid of the space. Yeah. And I, you know, that's kind of the same thing. Just you want it nice and high and different ways of teaching it, different techniques, but the same thing. You're getting rid of this crazy leverage that the gun would have over you. So notice, three great trainers here, they are teaching the same thing, but in a different way. And one thing I wanna emphasize, guys, when you watch a lot of videos out there, and we notice this a lot, we can kind of tell people who have been around the block and who haven't. For example, in the YouTube comments, you know, everyone in the YouTube comments is, is right, right? I mean, it's oh. the internet, right? But um, usually you'll hear someone go, oh, you know, you can't do that, you can't do that. 
it's not necessarily the case because let's say Dave teaches you and you watch a video with Dave and now if you watch a video with Doran Dutch, they might teach different techniques, but they've ultimately accomplished the same, same thing. Yeah, they've already succeeded in, in accomplishing that principle. So keep that in mind, guys, when you are also learning techniques, it's hardly ever black and white in the shooting industry. It's situational dependent um, based on technique. But uh, yeah, keep that in mind. Guys, anything uh, when it comes to grip, um, maybe one thing to emphasize beyond the one minute here the, that would help our viewers. Uh, Dutch brought it up, and I was, I was remiss in not doing it myself. But it's uh, you know measuring; it's not equal tension in both hands. And you'll see people put so much torque, they'll induce firing, yeah, yeah. they'll induce it shaking. You know, and yeah, ninety-seven point six percent of all statistics are made up on the spot, right? So <laughs> I like thirty seventy percent. And what I, for me, what I will do is uh, I'm teaching. If you're presenting a pistol, mm -hmm. you know, I'll just come on and feel your forearms. Yeah, this this forearm should feel tight. That this forearm good, should yeah. feel loose. That feels that feels yes. good there. <laughs> That's how I'll what do it. What does it feel like? I'll come by and check. <laughs> I, as they're shooting, I just want to feel what that tension feels like and what that tension feels like in, the, in an on-firing hand. I'll look for the firing hand capillary refill on the thumb. You'll see these people smash down their thumbs yeah. onto their support hand, and I just, hey, just relax. Get yeah, them. so that's interesting you mentioned that. Um, I have never been a fan of that. I, I see people pinching down. Oh yeah, they will, yeah. Yeah, and um, for me, the reason why is, particularly for newer shooters, you pinch down under stress and recurl, that could potentially separate the support hand. You know, so yeah, I, I've noticed that happen. Um, anything else that's uh, big takeaways that may be beyond what you guys were able to cover in a minute that are definitely uh, like a, a good tip for our viewers? No, good. I mean, honestly, when you try to get your point across under duress, uh, less is more. Mm. So the more streamlined it can be, the more just keep it simple, you know, keep stupid. Keep it as simple yeah. as possible because they're if you're trying to show someone how to use a gun in a with, there's about to be a gunfight, they're gonna be absolutely terrified. Yeah, you've already failed. You know, like <laughs> I trained for years before I got in my first gunfight. I was already, you know, and I was scared enough as it was. So mm. I mean. It's just, you know, results may vary. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you like this uh, short video. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Do you guys want to see more videos like this about the way that the guys uh, approach uh, techniques differently, how they teach it? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, if you're not yet subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time. Thanks.